at 19, it was real hard, you know, mm. especially with the car wash. Cause you know, I got 30 year old, 40 year old employees and yeah. they like, they think you're your mama and your daddy. And no, you're right. my employee. I'm, right. <laughs> I'm paying right. you. So they think you can, um, you know, kind of walk over you or take advantage. So I really had to learn. And I was a people pleaser too. So I had mm. to work on that and I was real sensitive. So, you know, I tried to, I probably went, you know, over and beyond mm -hmm. at certain points that I wouldn't have now. Good idea. Now we buy merch. Girl, that's ghetto. Payment miss. Ooh, the ghetto. Say she quit. Ooh, the ghetto. Late on your rent. Rent is ghetto. New event. Ooh, the ghetto. Invoice in. That ain't ghetto. Money spin. Oh, that's ghetto. Hold on. It's kind of ghetto being a CEO. Have you been completely isolating yourself in business? Like, you don't have people that you could do this business with. Well, you need coworkers, and that is why we created the Entrepreneurs Coworkers Community. This allows you to be able to develop relationships with other people in your community. So, in the Entrepreneurship Coworkers Community, we give you a quiz to find out who you are and what type of CEO you are. And in this quiz, you get to meet other CEOs that may be more creative or traditional or hybrid. We have these CEOs there for you. But even taking it up a notch, we have local chapters in your city from Atlanta to Dallas to New York to Houston to Chicago chapters in your city where we're actually linking up every single month to work together linking up to go to brunch together having fun together doing community service outreach like this is a section of our life where we can really co-work and mingle with other people it's time for you to get some co-work assist and this community is completely free just because you're watching this podcast all you have to do is stop Pause the podcast, click the link below, take the assessment, get in the community, and I'll see you there. Bye, coworker. Back to the episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Ghetto CEO Podcast, where we talk about all things being a CEO, because y'all, being a CEO is giving very much ghetto, okay? So we bring you uh, CEOs that want to tell their stories, because we can't keep this in, right? But if you enjoy this podcast, I need you to like comment subscribe and then head over to apple or spotify and leave us a review because that's how the podcast guys know we doing good okay now listen today is not any different we bringing another real ceo to the real couch okay today we in a new city today okay it's giving <laughs> it's giving uh business uh casual in here yeah. today okay <laughs> i'm loving it i'm excited now listen we are so excited for this guest because she has been through some things, okay? She has went through the fire, but came out unscorched, okay? Welcome yes. to the couch, friend. Thank you so much for having me. I'm <laughs> How so How are you? Me. Are you excited? I am so excited. Listen, it's, you gonna tell us, you gonna give it to us raw. I'm gonna give it all to you. Period. Well, tell the people who you are. So my name's Kayla Cherie. I am the owner and founder of the Blueprint University, which I have recently launched, um, basically to show all you guys how not to go through the ghetto of business. So yes. I am honored to be here. We're gonna get to the T of everything. So that's a little bit about Listen, <laughs> and I love, you said the Blueprint University, right? Yes. So I love that because really that's what people be thinking. They like, okay, I want to get into being a CEO. You know, I'm yeah. going to set my lashes. I'm going to set my this. And somebody needs to just give me that blueprint. Right. You know what I mean? And so they get into the Blueprint University. And what are you like teaching them, telling them not to do? Well... I'm teaching them a bit of everything, but I teach okay. them actually what not to do as well when I'm like one on one with them. Okay, okay. So it's more than just, you know, getting your LLC done, getting your foundation and all that. Of course, you know, once we go through the hiring process, then you got to get through employees. Yes. And we all know that's, uh, whew. yeah. Let me tell you. About the <laughs> no, just like, <laughs> no, it's a, it's a whole process. And I think a lot of times people don't realize. When we say we want to start a business, what a business really right. is, right? We like, I want to make some money and start a business. Those are two different things, no, right? For sure. Like you could, you know, do a little affiliate play, right. do something to make some money. But a business, employees, taxes, all the things. So when you think about the most ghetto thing about yeah. being a CEO or something that you learn, what's the number one thing that comes to your mind? Number one thing that I've learned: make sure you always just have a plan. Okay, have a plan and place um because I see a lot of people or even myself like you know I, I cre you create a business plan but then that is more to that you gotta yeah. like execute that plan you yeah. gotta make sure you have people um you know in your corner you can always go to because mm -hmm. we all know like finance is gonna get tight and stuff but just have a secure plan people you know network out so you can you know use your resources yeah. and when times get tough because it's gonna get tough no matter yeah. what level you at like it's yeah. always gonna get tough always. and um 
Yeah, just try to execute that plan as best as you can. You know, one thing that I love about what you said with execution is because that is where people get stuck. No, for real. Like <laughs> You can make some more money. Let me, I'm going to tell the camera. Y'all can make more money if you execute. If yes. you do more, you can make more money. A lot of times we literally, for our university, we say we are anti-learning university. I don't mm-hmm. want you to learn shit else. Okay, right. don't learn nothing else. I want you to execute on the 55,000 resources right. that you already <laughs> did. Like, if you just execute, you will make more money. No, seriously. And a lot of people think, you know, because everybody got courses out, they showing, they be like, yes. I got this mentor, that mentor, right. but are you exe- are you putting in the work to execute, execute the plan? Because, like, we can give you the blueprint. I can Come say, on. do this, that, and Come this, on. and that, but yes. if you don't execute with the work, be consistent with yep. the work, you ain't going to get nowhere. You're not Mm. going to get anywhere. And that's the thing. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they get stuck there, right? They get stuck in the, what they call analysis paralysis, Mm -hmm. the information overload, like just trying to acquire so much information. And so people need to understand one, what type of person they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you a person that feel like you need too much information? Mm -hmm. Like you just need to start moving your feet. So how do y'all like help them just execute? And before you answer that, how did you start executing? Yeah. Okay, look, yeah, I was gonna go into that. Yes. I started at nineteen, so okay. I was, um, Me too, girl. yeah, Come on, girl. <laughs> let's go nineteen. Oh, That's look, the girls outside, <laughs> right? So I was um, studying pre medicine at UNLV. Okay, um, so then I got into, I had good credit, like. My mom set me up good, so I had good credit going Almost. out, and I was like, what the other mothers? I got this 760 <laughs> credit score. Mm-hmm. I got I, they pre-approving me for everything left and right. Mm-hmm. So then I ran into this lady. She had this um, large building. I wanted to make it like an African-American Chinatown. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, let me do it. So I was out there doing the work, like doing laying concrete. Girl, I'm 19 years old. I ain't never seen what? concrete in my life. <laughs> out there laying concrete. I wasn't just, working that hard. See. Yeah. <laughs> I was working, but it wasn't no concrete. Being yeah. Laid. I love it. I was doing it, pulling up carpet, like yes. trying to redesign this building and put okay. businesses in there to mm-hmm. thrive. And, you know, I was like, let me partner with people that already got like a little business going yes. on, invest okay, so in where them. Was this at? Where are you from? I'm originally from California, okay. but I moved to, I went to college for Vegas. So I was okay. in, in Vegas. Vegas at this okay. time. So, you know, I found, you know, people with like little car wash and detailing business. And I was like, okay, let me invest. Let me make it better. Yes. And so I put money in there and I'm um, a tax company and then like a music studio and trying to get the building up and running and stuff. Yeah. And of course, you know, we'll go a little bit in that later, but it got a little tricky when, of course it get tricky with partnerships because you right. just never know, period. But, um, Later on, I ended up kind of it's coming to execution. They don't execute. So like it was like mm. I gave them the plan. I gave them every the, the tools. Or the, partner? the partners. The partners. Okay. Because you know, I, me, I was trying to be an investor. Like, let yeah. me invest this business. Yeah. You know, I'm still in school, just trying to make some money. Mm-hmm. And I tried to give them the leeway, but yeah. it just didn't work. But because yeah. I, you know, but then I ended up taking it over and girl, then I went in through that led me to bankruptcy two years later, fast okay, forward. Okay, hold on, hold on. Right. So let's, Cause we, uh, yeah, she said, listen, it got right. up, down, up, down. It got crazy. Yeah. Okay. Real crazy. So we were partnering with these people that wasn't uh, executed. That's one, yeah. that's a key thing, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people think when they are partnering with people, you're partnering with the business. No, you're partnering with the CEO. You need to yeah. check. They post. Right. You know what I'm saying? What type of CEO is this? Right. Yeah. But all right, they wasn't executing, they wasn't doing it. And so how did y'all like dissolve the partnership? Um, I pretty much I gave them their chances, but then at this point, like we got they employees coming up, like they ain't paying me. And when this and, and you that 19. Girl, 19, girl. You're like, baby, I'm trying to go to the club. Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> We trying to turn up. Y'all got me doing grown up stuff right now, but no. Girl, I was a full CEO right Yay. there. So, you know, I did what I had to do. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm telling like now it it's so hard because sometimes you don't have to work as hard these mm-hmm. days. But back then, like, we had to work like to put in where we wanted to be now. Listen, and I every time I say it, I be feeling like I sound like somebody grandma. Right. Like, we shall like, oh <laughs> back in the day. It was we had it social media. Right. <laughs> All of that. But it's real. Like you, I mean, you really had to really go out, go door to door, talk to yes. people. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, they didn't, the partners didn't work out. 
They didn't took work over out. the businesses. Took you took over all their businesses. Took over all of them. How many businesses? Were it was four at the time. So I took wow. over four businesses. I was still trying to get this property. At this point, I was like, let me just fill up this property with any and everybody. Like the African American thing ain't working for me. <laughs> so let me just try to put some people here to pay this rent, yeah. you know, to try to, you know, make some money some way. Um, so I did do that. And then I also um went into of course, you know, trying to run the businesses, which I did. I went, I got contracts. I hustled like yeah. with the car wash. I got them contracts with every car dealership, every uh, rental car place in town. And I did the work. But yeah. of course, now we behind on money. Right. And, you know, those type of companies, they pay nine months, nine, I'm sorry, 90 days out. Yeah. So three months. So what I'm supposed to do for three months, where I'm going to get this money from? And not to mention you are running Three other right businesses because what they wasn't car washes they was other stuff. yeah taxes oh um a tax company I never seen a dime from that and <laughs> it's funny now because now I got to everything comes back full circle because yeah. now I opened up a tax company this year and I made a million dollars in four months period it was crazy I'm like okay, okay. everything just come back full circle it didn't yeah. work out then but it's working we now bank. yeah <laughs> so we like we're gonna do it the right way yeah but. Just like even an example like that, like that's ghetto, like having to go through everything and then yeah. wait for it to come back. Mm -hmm. If you don't keep going, it's going to stop. You exactly. get that, but you got to keep going. That's right? crazy. So we do all of that. And so the businesses, so did the businesses start failing one by one or was it like, I'm done with this shit. Y'all yeah. can have this. <laughs> Hey, come get y'all shit. Like, what, how was it? It was like, they all had their time period. So, of okay. course, I think the tax company was the first one to go because, you know, that's only a certain amount of time. It was yeah. like four months. Mm -hmm. And it was like, after that, like, okay, that's no hope. Like, right. it ain't no point to keep moving forward right. with that. And then um, with the car wash, I, I tried to hold on with that for like two years, a good two years. Mm -hmm. And I just, it was just, it, I think we were so much in the hole and so mm -hmm. much like, and employees, the turnover was yeah, horrible yeah. and people quit and stuff breaking and yeah. trying to, you know, find locations and, you know, everything's expensive. It yeah. was just a lot. I couldn't find myself out the hole with that. Right. And then, you know, I even went back into the work field because I had my nursing license from high mm. school and I had to start working 12 hour shifts. I'm still in school. Yes. But right. it's the resilience for me. Right. Because so the girls be ready to give up by yeah. midnight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I have no choice. I got to keep going. Like I'm yeah. trying, and I'm still trying to save my credit at the time because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, like I told you. Yes, <laughs> I, I started you off right now. Look at you, girl. But yeah. it's okay. That came back full circle. It's yes. back up there now. Period. But so after the business started failing, you said you filed bankruptcy. You was like, yeah. I mean, I was over five hundred thousand dollars in debt. I didn't have no choice at that time. Yeah. So it was like I tried my best. Like I was just like, you know what. I, I probably cried every night I feel it. and went through it. But I was like, you know, we just got to, this the, This my best alternative right, right now. So I did, I filed and then um, I was finishing up school and um, I'm in the time um, I'm a franchise owner for Brinks Home Security. Mm -hmm. So I, I run um, a franchise for alarms. So at that time I was in the alarm field and um, that's how I was making, you know, trying to get my money mm -hmm. back up. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, after the bankruptcy, school was finished. I was like, let me move to Dallas. So yeah. I packed up. And I don't think nothing. And so one thing, I we talk about this. So the reason why I was like, girl, we like the bankruptcy warriors yeah. over here. Because we have a another segment on Monday. It's called the Monday Meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's me and my brother. And so he been telling his bankruptcy story. <laughs> like, it is like the best story in the world. He like, I am free. Right. Like, I, I can't breathe now, you know? And it was from business. Yes. He had a trucking company. So, I, and I think the thing is, and this is the the reason for the Ghetto CEO mm -hmm. podcast. I think we have so much shame yeah. in entrepreneurship because the business doing what businesses do. Right. You know what I mean? Like, businesses fail every day. Yeah. We, like, why are we ashamed to talk about it or tell people what happened? Or, like, I had to use the avenue, like, yeah. bankruptcy that we actually right. are supposed to use. Right. Nobody was crying. The Silicon ba uh, uh, Valley people wasn't crying right. when they bank fell. <laughs> that shit went to zero in our face. And they took off with these people money. Right. But we feel like, you know, we can't like, oh, my sales are down. I'm super sad. Yeah. You know, like, and it's like, nah, this is what business is doing yeah. what businesses do. do. And I went through that because I was like, I'm a failure. Like, yeah. oh, my goodness. But I guess it's just in me. And it got to be in you to yeah. be like, keep going, girl. Yeah. No, you got this. Like, you going to pout for a week, but you got to get back up. And yeah. what's next? Yeah. So that's what it was like. What's next? And shoot, Dallas was next for me. And I was like, Mark is good. 
let me go. And then from there, I, you know, I have my hard times out there too, but then I just start thriving. So, so what, when you moved to Dallas, what was the plan? How old were you at this time? At Dallas, about 22. Okay. So, so um, it was a couple years out. Yeah, you, you know, I feel like in entrepreneurship, it aged you so fast. You right. by, by twenty two, you like goddamn <laughs> right. It's like time to retire. <laughs> no, for real. like it's over. It's like, like I'm done. Whew. I'm finished. Lord. But, what was your plan moving to Dallas? If you're over here on YouTube watching the podcast, listen, I need you to do me a favor. If you love me, do me this favor. Pull out your phone right now and go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or anywhere that you actually listen to podcasts at, right? I need you to subscribe and leave a review. Listen, the way podcasts work is the streets don't know we doing good if it's not on the audio version. The YouTube version don't really count, okay? So go over there, leave us a review and let us know how much you love the podcast now back to the episode so i was in the alarm field the market was good i knew how to make money in that so mm -hmm. i was like okay let me up move um i was running as a sub dealer at this time so i did that and then i was like it was my it was my time to you know become a franchise owner um i moved to dallas with ten thousand dollars i um i didn't have a job i was applying for jobs because mm -hmm. i was like you know i might need a little backup plan but i didn't really want one yeah and <laughs> When it's in you, and it's in you. Girl, the funny thing about it is when I was looking for apartments, you know, I was trying to find me a cute because, you know, I was used to being comfortable. Yes. And girl, the day I applied for the apartment, my bankruptcy hit my credit. So I ended up in the ghetto. You like, <laughs> man, y'all could have waited. <laughs> right. Like, Four days like, out. One day for, right. the, <laughs> yes. for the run. Yeah. But it all happened. So it's an experience. So girl, I ended up in the ghetto. Um, if everybody know where Dallas is, I was on Odelia and Skillman, so they know that's the ghetto. They're like, oh, girl, Ooh, girl. Yeah. you have made it through. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes God will humble you. You know what I'm no. saying? Bring you all the way back. Now, listen, child, come on. Girl. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you start looking around, you like, man, this can't be none but God that I yeah. made it through this. So it's like you kind of be having to go through. Yeah. All the craziness. craziness. And all, like you said, the craziness that you went through is to prepare you for your blessings that right. you're receiving today. So you went to Dallas. You moved to the ghetto. Moved to the ghetto. You was like, this ain't the life. Right. And then what? I had to work my way up. So I was like, grind time. I was out hiring my employees, trying to, because they door-to-door -door sales yeah. teams. So I was up doing that. Um, just trying to build clientele. And then um, I did go back into the workforce because I still had bills to be paid. Right, right. And, uh, oh, I had I had to go back into the workforce because here I go being a business owner again. <laughs> I made a silly investment trying yeah. to invest in somebody's little club out there. I had, well, I told you I moved out there with 10. Yeah. I probably had like, now I had my last $3,000. I gave it to him. He was like, I'm going to get you your 10. I'm going to get you like 10. <laughs> oh, man. So then hey, that's sir, we're going to stop. What? Did he give you the money back? Girl, no. We looking for you, right? Bro. We we still need our bread. You know what I mean? But that, no, that makes sense. Like, in, in as an entrepreneur, you never become risk averse. You know yeah. what I mean? So you always like, all right, this, right, this, the, like, time. <laughs> this the time. This is the time. This one going to pay off. <laughs> It did not. And I was like, Lord, what is what is going on? I'm back, yeah. back here again. Yeah. But I thought I got to keep going. So, you know, I had the alarms. I was doing that. Um, and then it was just working, working 12-hour shifts again, back in the hospital on my feet. And that was rough. Anyways, fast forward, I end up applying for my own franchise. Okay. I thought I was going to go with the company I was with. But then, of course, you know, when you're already in this industry, yeah. people start cock blocking. And yeah. they like, nah, we need you still here. So yeah. it ended up coming full circle. And I went with another company. They took me on. And it just worked from there. And it's crazy. I had to go take a test um, to pass to get licensed and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I called. And this is with the Home Alarm With company? Home Alarms. So you got the, uh, okay, so yeah. you were, was the Home Alarm company the company that ended up helping you, like, kind of get out of yeah. there? Okay. Yeah. So, and you had been started it. And I want to, like, yeah. show people the timeline. So you started when? 2016, 2017. And then when you feel like it went up? 2020. It wasn't in a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because sometimes you like, okay. I've been selling these alarms. Right. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, I've been doing this thing, but it's not paying off. And just showing people, like, it don't happen in a day. Right. And it don't. But you just got to keep at it, keep resilience. Because then when you think about it, my company start thriving um, end of 2019, early mm -hmm. 2020. Then we went into COVID. And then it was like, I had to find another, mm -hmm. you know, reverse to try to change up because now we can't go to door to door knocking yeah, on people's doors ain't nobody yeah. gonna open the door so then it was like we had to change the business model but just keep going and 
That's all I can tell you. Just keep going. Don't give up. <laughs> day like it ain't Just easy. Keep moving, yeah. But but you, you even as you talked about your different businesses. So what type of different businesses do you have now? So I do. Um, I still have the franchise companies. Okay. Um, I also. I mean, I do a little bit of real estate. Okay. Airbnbs. You know, some of everything. Like mm-hmm. I'm diverse. Yeah. You know, home health. I go into any and everything. I get my hands on the tax yeah. company, and then of course. Blueprint University, Mm -hmm. which is now like my main focus, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to promote get out there because I really want to help all entrepreneurs not go through what we went through, especially like the the young ones, 18, 19, y'all still got the, y'all got the youngness in you, the mentality and Y'all got the time. No, Man, and, and you got the energy. <laughs> yeah, the energy, right, that part, because now I'm tired. My knees get old, <laughs> my energy get down. It's like, I don't want to do that of this no more. Like, can I retire already? Right. You know what I mean? Because how old are you? I'm 26. You 20? Girl, I am 29, <laughs> and I'm ready to go, okay? But, I, you know, I get it because, like I said, it's just a lot. It's a yeah. lot. Like, entrepreneurship ages you so fast. Thanks. And so I think... If you are, like, a young girl out there listening to this, like, yes, be about your hustle. Yeah. Be about it. But, like, work smart. Get a mentor. That yes. was not something that I had. Yeah. Well, did you have a mentor when you started? No. It was just me, like, trying to figure out everything. And that was hard, too. But, I mean, I guess now, it's, you know, that was part of the journey. Yeah. But if you have that person, like, it ain't going to be easy. It ain't like we're going to make you, you know, millionaires. But yeah. we can help you, guide you to yeah. get there. <laughs> Right. Just to let you know, right? It ain't like, a button we got no, behind because right. they show. They be like, "Well, you know, I'm gonna go over here to Blue Parent University, University and get me a, a golden nugget right. <laughs> and think it's gonna be all easy." No, and then they pop in there. You be like, "So you gotta do the work." Yes. So right. we gonna we gonna do an interview. Make sure you're ready yes. to put in the work because yeah. some work gonna come behind it, and you definitely gotta have that. I love that. So. I love that. So you talked about your journey, the financial woes, but you also talked about employees. Yes. Oh. Listen, <sighs> maybe the ghetto. Because we young. Are you? Do you have siblings? I do, but okay. we all like, we have nine years age gap, so we was like only child syndrome. <laughs> Girl, that's why I was about to ask, because I'm an only child. Okay. And it just was about me. Yeah. And so yeah. now you want me to care about your feelings. Like, <laughs> right. Like, what? <laughs> how do I do this? So how was it for you to transition, especially young? Because people don't respect you. You know what I'm yes. saying? Because you young. So how was it transitioning into, you know what I'm saying, entrepreneurship and having to actually have employees? At 19, it was real hard. You know, mm. especially with the car wash. Because, you know, I got 30-year-old, 40-year-old employees. And yeah. they like, they think you're your mama and your daddy. And No. You right. my employee, I'm, right. I'm paying right. you, so they think you can, um, you know, kind of walk over you or take advantage. So I really had to learn, and I was a people pleaser too, so I had mm-hmm. to work on that. And I was real sensitive, so you know, I tried to. I probably went, you know, over and beyond mm-hmm. at certain points that I wouldn't have now, um, knowing what I know. Mm-hmm. But you know, you definitely just when you hire and just. You know, you have everything in place, especially W two employees, because now, yes. like with the franchise ten ninety nine, it's more easier, yeah. more flex. You know, you know, you gotta hire more, but mm-hmm. the W twos, y'all gotta make sure y'all have y'all insurance in place. Yes. You gotta make sure you know unemployment, because yes. they will come for you. Like one girl, she made me so mad one time. Girl, Ooh, she called me. I was in class. It. I think I had a like biology <laughs> test or something, and she was calling, had me hot. Like. I was Girl, I'm trying to take my seat. <laughs> right. I'm trying to graduate. And she's like, I'm about to quit. I was like, well, quit then. Bye. Like, well, yeah. you know, yeah. and it was like a lot of emotions. So you got to make sure you keep your emotions mm. in check. And it's a lot. It, it was hard, especially It's a growth. <laughs> it's like so much growth. Because the thing is, and this is why I resonate with you so well, right? Because it's like, as a young entrepreneur, we're literally growing up as women. Yeah. And as a CEO, yes. like I'm trying to figure out like what it's like to not be in my mama house. Right. I'm trying to figure out what it's like to be on my own. Mm-hmm. Like what it's like to be in my first series of relationship yeah. and all of this. And I'm trying to be a boss. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of times it's very hard because you're going through all of these emotions and changes. Yeah. And especially, like I said, I'm an only child. So it was yeah. like you, you. Oh, you don't like to work like I like to work. work like yeah. you don't work as hard as I like to work. You don't want to pull up carpet. Yeah. I will pull up carpet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like 
it's just hard to kind of see people and be like, okay, I got to figure out what type of person you are. Right. It's like children. Yeah, no, for real. It's babysitting. It's babysitting all day long. <laughs> and when, and you know, now, especially when you get to a point where you finally can hire somebody to do the babysitting mm-hmm. for you, that's like, you're like, whoo. Thank I you, made Jesus. it <laughs> a little bit, like yes. a little bit, cause right. that's hard. And oh, I don't. Uh, every time I think about it, I get anxiety. It, listen, PTSD <laughs> started twitching. Yeah, you know I mean, like it is a whole thing. But you know, I think it's a necessary evil. You know, what yeah. I mean, because you can't build this business by yourself. Yeah. It's like I just always talk to people. And tell entrepreneurs, like, know this, building a team is hard. hard yeah. And the people that's on the other side of the team, like, give small business owners grace. Yes. We don't fucking know. Yeah, we don't. We, we don't know. Tell we, us. We figuring it out. Yeah, tell us. You Like, I talk, how I talk to you, just be like, hey, man, like, Keisha, don't talk. You know what I mean? Like, just, Susie, stop talking to me just, like that. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, I ain't know. Nice. And yeah. even now, I still mess up. Like, even having successful businesses, like, even recently, like, this girl, she said, give up that little blueprint. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> give it to somebody else. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it's feedback. Yes, it's right. feedback. It's like, okay, but well, we're going to put systems in place yeah. and, you know, make it better. But, right. yeah, and it ain't even about the money because you can have as much money as you want, but you yeah. still – you still got to work, and at the that's end at the end of the day. day. At the end of the day, you still got to put in the work. No, this I, I love this. This was so good, y'all. I hope yeah. y'all got some gems from this. Yeah. What I heard is you still got to work. Yeah, work all day long and make sure you stay focused and just keep being consistent and, you know, thriving as much as you can. Yes, so, I yeah. love it. I love it. So how can I stay connected with you? How can I tap in? Um, you can find me at the blueprintuniversity.com and you can find me at Kayla's Blueprint. It's K A I L A S Blueprint on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Reach out. I'm glad to assist everybody with starting their business journey and getting them the resources for funding, structuring, and everything you may need within your business needs. So reach out. Listen, reach out. tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap in, <laughs> y'all. This is another episode of the Yellow CEO Podcast where we give you the raw and unfiltered truth. Now, listen, if you ain't tapped into the Monday meetings, you need to tap into the Monday meetings because this is where we keep it real, okay? Me and my brother, every single Monday at 5 a.m., drop an episode where we give you the real. We talking about all the things tea, okay? We was just talking about Donald Trump and his mugshot, girl. Right. Oh. We was giving them <laughs> all the tea, like we tell it. So, y'all, tap into the Monday meetings. It's only on audio. So, Apple Podcast. Podcast or Spotify podcast, okay? But listen, make sure y'all continue to tap into these entrepreneurs. Like, comment, and subscribe, and continue to watch the Girl CEO podcast. I'll see you guys later. Bye.